first. My name is Kenneth Bird. My company is Crystal H Technology Screens. I am uh, setting up my projectors for demonstration for tomorrow. So today, we are going to be in the tech room. Usually I'm either downstairs. I got to pick out what areas I'm going to be at most likely, but I haven't done any demonstrations in the tech room in a while. So I figured I'm going to play in here today. So in the tech room, we have a 155 inch painted to the wall over there. Where's my HDMI cable for my PC? Is it? Yes, is it? Uh, we have um, 150 inch acoustic over there. Those are seasoned screens, just to let you know. Um, we don't have them available on the website. They're only available when the weather gets a little bit more much better outside because uh because that screen sprayed outside so these screens right here are out of season right now we have a 92 inch red that's a phantom on that side motorized projection screen and so so just trying to hook up my computer so i can set that up and this right here is the gaming cinema over there that does both so we have two projectors running on that screen over there so I'm going to figure out where my HDMI cable goes in it. I'll be back into the projector. Because it's fighting me so. Where are you? I'm upside down. No, I'm upside down. What's going on here? The two HDMI cables back there. about to say. Come on now. One of them's got a hit. Alright, so I'm going to hook up this one first. Because I had this one downstairs. And I want to adjust this to the size of the screen I have up here. So I'll fire this one up first. This is a Chrissy 1080p projector. I got for around 200 and um, I got for 270 bucks. And then over here, we got the uh, DuSonic at 235.1 and a Sony VPL FH30 over there. I'm just going to size my screen up. So I'm just getting ready for my setup in here. I haven't decided what kind of projector I'm going to put here. So that Philips, if it was legit, that ultra short, that would have been nice. I could have set that right there in the front. That's a better, better projector than the ones I have over here. All right, let me see what we got going on here with this screen. Where are we at? Which one of these computers is running? I think we're on the second one. We're not on the first one, so it means we're on the second hit. So let's see what we got over there. This has got to be the computer. Oh, we're in HDMI. I forgot. We're not we weren't using adapters on these. All right, so let me see, where is the switcher for HMI? Computer two. All right, let me get on the side. Let's see exactly what I'm doing here. For some reason, I, just, I can feel it, but it's not there. I don't think I'm hitting the right button. Let me see. That's focus. I kind of memorize the thing by heart. Let's just see what we got going on here. This just me as HMI 2. Oh, I think I might have skipped it. Or did I hit it? I'm not sure. I think I skipped it. No, there it is right there. Okay, cool. All right. I'm going to adjust that so it comes into play. I need my... Nope, not focus on the wrong side. Nope, ah, I think. One more again, hold on. I think it's a little higher up. Adjust it in. One more time, I think it's HMI 2. HMI 2, I need my... That's going to be my lens shift. That's the beautiful thing about lens shift. I love freaking lens shift. Let me expand my screen because this is the 150. Let me see. Um, where's my zoom at on here? Zoom, 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 zoom. Okay. Too small. Okay. 
Okay. Well, just want to bring it back so. Because my screen should be way bigger. Oh, wait, wait, I'm at 1610 on this one. I forgot to do 1610 on this one. So 16, I can get a much bigger screen. Uh, let me see what we got to do here. Let that focus. We don't need that. Here we go. Let me then shift that back a little more. Up here. All right, now we go over into violin shift. I need focus. So I'm doing all this by memory by just touching the back of the projector. I pretty much have used this thing enough times to know exactly where I need to be at. Let me see, where are we at? We're at 16. Oh, we're on 1610. All right. Yeah, we're on 1610. Yeah, okay, cool. Sure, at sixteen ten. Make sure we're at sixteen ten. Yes. Okay, we're at sixteen ten. We're at widescreen. Hmm. Check my Zoom application again. Make sure I'm actually going for this to go. And I need to tighten up here. I got a little bit of fold here on the screen. This is what drives me nuts. I have to have everything just right. That's just me personally. How I have to have everything. Everything has to be just right. So I have a sound bar on the back of that running through that right there. We got our second sound bar running for this system right here. And this screen over here has a two projector setup. Which I'm going to be displaying over that one tomorrow. Just my clamps. That screen, this right here, has a rail system and it has clamps on it, which makes it much easier because with this, I don't have to go in and I don't have to basically put a frame. It's attached to a clamp system. So instead of you going to frame, I bought one of those photos, those sort of background drops. And that's what I'm using for my frame. And that is the blackout cloth draped across it using the clamps. Just want to make sure I don't have any lines on my screen because that drives me a bit nuts. Now, which one of these am I running? One of these is actually the, uh, let me see. I'm get wrong keyboard over here. Wrong keyboard. The keyboard key. I gotta mark my keyboards, get my keyboards mixed up all the time.
I hope my sound's down. I think the last time I had it up, it might have been way too loud. on the acoustic now in this environment here we're about 18 feet back from my screen so my projector is sitting back here at 18 feet my screen's 150 inches and as you can see well the environment all that other good stuff now let me get the other one set up this one's good i should get my lens off because i had it downstairs in the workshop and yeah, we should be good we got our sound running through here Make sure my sound's running correctly. What is the subset for this? Oh, the subs are back here. All right, cool. Now this is the acoustic blackout cloth that we had that's coated with gamer technology. It's a, a screen thing is beautiful. Unfortunately, we don't have these in stock due to the fact that this is a seasonal screen. Which means we only cook these in the summertime because we have to be outside for these. But it's a gorgeous screen. Let me see if we can get the focus because I need to be. Nope, oh, we don't need that. We need a. Uh, here we go. Manage it a little bit. There we go, that's perfect. Kind of work. Alright, cool. Makes me happy. Makes me happy. Boom. And this is on a, again, uh, long throw. I don't like to use short throws in here. If I don't have to, I don't like to use short throws. I'm use short throws if I had to, because the, the, uh, the environment requires it. Because downstairs in the theater room, I have to use short throws down there due to, I love long throws. It's more of a challenge for the screen. The short throw, you're right up on top of it, distance throws in that far, it's really easy to do. So that's why like on the 148 we have downstairs on the 60 inch, that thing sits back. I had to measure, I think it's five feet away from my screen to do 148 inches. And keep in mind that projector was only designed to do a screen size of uh, 80 inches and we got it at 148 on this technology right here so the same screen you're seeing here is the same one that's downstairs the difference is the one that's downstairs is stapled to a frame and hanging up on the wall and this one is actually draped over uh, and um, clamped on that uh, projector what is it called the background bar the background settings that they have for photo shooting so that's what it is it's a metal frame that's what this is. Just to show you that, that acoustic surface that we have, you don't have to do a lot of stretching to get the wrinkles out. I just have mine draped from side to side using clamps. So these are close, you can see. That's the background drop, middle frame, and it's clamped up, that's it. I don't have to really staple in, because up here I was not gonna build a frame for this environment in here, it's too big of a screen. But I wanted a bigger screen. All right, let me see. While well, that's activating, let's go pop over here to the Sony VPL FH36. This is a gray screen, by the way, not black. Let's fire this one up. Someone's asking me why I still have my air conditioners in. I've run three freaking projectors up here. It gets hot up here really freaking quick. So I gotta run the air conditioner. All right, we got up the fire stick. Everything's running up here for this one. So we're gonna run the PS4 and we're gonna run uh, the 235.1 at top. This is a gaming cinema screen, which means you can watch movies off it and game at the same time. as the whole thing in the yards on it, so it would be good. There's my remote control for this thing. Let me see. All right, that's up with that. Get that to fire up. There we go. I love this screen because I can do multiple applications on this screen. As soon as I get me another computer in here, I'm gonna do a portrait mode off here too. I need a computer for portrait mode. So let's see what we got to do here to get you settled in because you're a definitely a crooked. All kinds of crooked. So we're not sitting up right directly. I don't want to snap with you. So that's why you're slanting. Not be slanting. There we go. Thank you. 
de Cristo, Cristo nosso, Oh, you want you can check out the screen over there at the same time. And that one's going off. Let me see. Okay, we got the right remote control for this one. It doesn't want to operate. All right, Alexa's well, just having a fit today. So let's disconnect her. Let's put her back in. Hopefully she'll work this time. She's having a bit of a fit. So then I'm gonna come over here and get that picture for the screen over here. Oh, let me see, I'm gonna come out of here and do, let's see. If you can seal carry, you just found your new favorite holster. This is a 4K control. This is the best holster for concealed carry. It's made for maximum concealment, no matter the occasion. Custom. Let's just get something to loop around you for the time being while I'm over here trying to assist. Craziness for her having her attitude today. She doesn't want to work. Nope, not gonna work today. I'm gonna have an attitude. Alright. Let's fish it over here. I'm gonna fix her. See what's wrong with her today. Why she doesn't want to function right. Let's see. There we go. Now she's functioning. So we're back over here to 235.1. I think I had a 2x4, thin 2x4 underneath this that was actually supporting this. I have no idea where in the world I put it at. Oh, great. I'm about to cut me another piece from downstairs in the basement. All right, let's go over here and let's check out this one right here. We'll let that play up top. While we adjust that one, this one's in 235.1 setting. And I think it's expanded all the way out. All right, now we're going to cut on the Sony. That's for the bottom. Hmm. We're going to need sound for this one. This is not necessary. Okay. Okay, we want to shift this one down all the way. Get the down shift that's over. Joy's a blend shift. I freaking love it. Can we expand our screen to a little bit bigger than this? Where we got the screen size? Here we go. Because I want to do Far Cry on this one tomorrow. Which one up here? Yeah, it fits just perfectly. Alright, where's the PS4 controller? Let's boot you up. Now, I like this one because this screen can do two, um, this has twin mode. So I can watch two at the same time on this one, which I should hook my RetroPie up to one of them. I should have a RetroPie running on one side and then on this side. Because in the other room we had the Dreamcast, but the Dreamcast is going to be running through a wallpaper screen. Oh, wait a minute, if I'm doing the Dreamcast in there, why am I running wallpaper in there? The, the auto image only comes up in a 4.3. And then again, I might run a fire stick through the back of that. And then with the other one, I might get the Apple TV for that one for my anime app. I'm sure we've been applications. All right, somewhere, somebody apparently disconnected without basically powering down safely. Let's see, price wise, we've got $270, $150, and $300. That's all I paid for the projectors I'm using in my environment right now. Got them off of eBay. Well, let's see what's going on top. I'm going to let that run.
So tomorrow, I'm going to actually put in, I want to get an Apple TV. I might get an Apple TV. I've never had one before, you know what I mean? I might get an Apple TV for the um, the theater room in here. We have a theater room in there. It's an anime gaming room in there because the other gaming room was converted for the cat's room. So I already have a short thumb in there, and I'm using an in-focus projector in that section over there. <sighs> so I might do a retro 4.3 for the Dreamcast and retro setup, gaming setup in there because everything is going to run off 4.3, literally. And then for the other projector, it's 16.9 short throw. We'll use that for the Apple TV. All right, asking for me to go and hit OK. I'm not even on with this one, are we? There we go. Got a little visual effects going on over top, which I like. I'll keep that on. There we go. So now we have the Sony running at the bottom, which is a little bit off. Feels like the screen is a little bit on the screen. Oh, there it goes. Perfect. Okay, there we go. All right, we just have to adjust this one. This one has to be adjusted so it's fitting a little bit better. That's what's bugging me right there. It's supposed to fit like that. But we'll take it for right now. I figure out what I'm going to do here. Right. And we have a sound bar running for this one. So we have sound right there for this one. This is the second sound bar set up for this one. This runs the equipment we have over here. Yeah, because I'm only ever up here. I'm like, you know, I got to come back up here and do some videos up here. So I'm barely up here. So I'm going to be doing some more demonstrations for the acoustic and um, some demonstrations for uh, the gamer cinema. We just sold about a couple of gallons of this a few minutes ago. So I figured I might as well just be able to do some demonstrations off of it. All right. So I like doing this one with the screen. Where's your remote control? Please don't tell me I'm losing remote controls that fast. Oh, in my pocket this time. Uh, let's go with the, um, let's go with the uh, 4K screen savers. I like this screen because I like to display black levels and white levels at the same time because it can run two projectors at the same time. So let's run uh, this one at the top. Some nice white levels for you. This is the Gamer Cell. We have this on the Black Friday sale. And at the bottom down here, I can do some gaming, but we're not really doing the gaming right now. We can run some contrast demonstrations below. So this screen right here is a very, very dark gunmetal also too. As I told you, the, 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 when you develop a gunmetal, you want to get a screen literally so dark that it tips on the scales of black, but it's not black. It's the ultimate gunmetal. That's why the uh, Phantom has a really heavy head gunmetal, actually much darker than this one right here. But this is Phoenix technology right here. I love it when people sit there and go, oh yeah, well, you know, the screens can't produce white levels. Yeah, yeah, they can. The problem with black screens and white levels, as I showed you before, that when you hit them with a projector, they, don't, they have a hard issue, a hard time producing white light. But like I said, we have that white um, technology, that Heitner technology, we can drop that into any kind of anything that's black and it will basically produce high white levels. And that's why I said, one of the things you have to be careful about is some of the screens out there claiming to be black screens and they're not, they're actually dark gray. This is a dark gray screen. If you stared at it and this screen wasn't in the equation and you were looking at it, you would have thought that screen was black, but no, that screen is actually gray. Now, when you look at the black screen over here, that screen's black, as you can see at the top, that's gray. I see that with the professionals too, they do it too. I thought daylight screen when it got here, I thought literally, I thought I was looking at a black screen in a demonstration, I'm like, oh shoot, they got a black screen, oh, we gotta get that down here. Got it down here, it was gunmetal. Dragonfly, gunmetal. Interesting, it's called Black Diamond, but I have yet to see a black screen that's literally black from a black diamond screen. I will, Curious if they have one. Only, only ones I've seen out of the Slate 8 and Slate 7 were basically just gray screens, dark gray screens. All right, so we're down here. Uh, we got a microphone hooked up, do we? Let's hit some contrast. Do we have any Starfield running off of this? We don't have Starfield. We should have it. should come up. We use it enough times. There we go, right there. 
Ah, my favorite, my star field. We got us a rat. Oh, We're man. Set. I love freaking Grand Theft Auto. Those are the best ones right there. But anyway, um, so now, now mind you, we're not using the Christie on here. We got a view sonic up top because people like use a lot of Christie projectors in demonstration. This stuff will run off anything. We got a view sonic up top at 600 by 800 res, 720p, and at the bottom, or this one, the one at top is 3800 lumens at 600 by 800 SVGA, 720p, and the one at the bottom is. 4300 lumens it is a sony projector it's 1920 by 1200 full 1080p projector at wxga so you know you figure out which one's which because like i said the technology we develop is designed to make 720p projectors even at 600 by 800 res look amazing next to a projector that is a full 1080p projector so as you can see we're displaying our i'm only going to do a demonstration but i might as well go real quick you're showing the star field nice black contrast levels and white levels at the same time. Four K snow screen savers. Let me go with this one here. I like this one here. Like snow. You watch snow and outer space at the same time. I did that. I'm gonna do that next time. We get a chance. The weather right now has been a little bit brisk. But if I get a chance to get outside on the 250 inches, we'll do a two projector set up out there. We'll do it snow on one side, outer space on the other side. I'd like doing those. More like doing like doing the outer space and snow at the same time. Let's go take a walk real quick. So we got this one over here firing up. Let's go to the side of the wall. Same thing I show you outside. As the screens have a 190 degree viewing angle, we can tap the wall. As you can see, pulls up with no problem whatsoever. All this technology we have in here has been tested outside, so that's how we know it has the ability to be able to pull images in fully lit environments. I like to use the big screens. So I am, I am right now working on getting myself a short throw. I haven't decided which short throw I want. I do know what kind of short throw I want for outside, but in here I haven't decided yet because I want to be able to fill the whole screen up for gaming. Come over here. Let's go have a look out the window. You can watch the snow over here. LG Beta Fish. And we can do some contrast up top. Oh, by the way, the 720p projector, uh, that projector has a 20,000 to 1 contrast. The one at the bottom only has four. Again, like I said, at the end of the day, when you have darker screens, it really doesn't make a difference at all when it comes to contrast levels. Let's come out of the snow right there for a minute. Let's do... Let's search this okay. I have no microphone hooked up to this at all, period. Much easier when you have a microphone running. Let's see. 4K demonstrations. What's wrong? Oh, control. We went back and forth. Here we go. Seven twenty P, six hundred by eight hundred reds up top. 1080p at the bottom.
Now, is it going to be a identical match? No. Um, we usually, when we do uh, two different projectors, it's not an identical match. My two different projectors. When we do the same projectors, we did a 720p ViewSonic and a seven and a 4K uh, ViewSonic side by side. You couldn't tell one from the other. But usually when you're doing two different projectors, you're going to have one off by a little bit, but not by much at the end of the day. Keep in mind, one's 38 and one is actually 40, 43. So there's not a lumen problem at all. Cinema Gray is a uh, cinema, sorry, cinema um, gamer is a part of the Black Friday Cyber Monday sale. That one is available for the shoot. Next week we start working on, um, what are we working on next week? We're working on that, that invisible black screen. My mom loves her Jitterbus Smart 3. Hold on, I told your mom we gave her a call. Okay, hon. It has all the features she uses most often. Hi, mom. How's it going? Everything's great. Don't forget if something urgent comes up. I just pressed the red button. Let's go over to, um, let me see. I'm going to play it back over here on this one too on the Sony. Usually I run it off the Chrissy. Let's run this one. This is a Marvel demo. I think this is this right here. Here we Ladies and gentlemen. I got running off of this. I was going to show the advancements of the car. Hmm, okay. So this is what usually most people are doing. You see our gallon sizes being sold, people are painting the entire wall. And it's much easier because then after that you can switch back and forth from 235 to 16.9, 16.10, or 15.9, you can swap back and forth. Or from 2.39, you can do uh, 2.35 to 2.39, so forth. you can swap back and forth. So they're literally just painting the entire wall. So next, once I get the other computer in here, we're gonna do portrait mode. We're gonna do portrait gaming on one side. I'm gonna break this up into two screens and have a 2.35 run until all on the same wall. Options. If you don't want to be in the dark, you don't have to be in the dark, you don't have to calibrate your projectors. It doesn't make a difference if your projector is a 600 by 800 or a 720p projector, it doesn't make a difference. You're still going to get an amazing picture. 720p at top, 1080p at the bottom. expensive projector it's not needed that's why I love to shop on eBay eBay right now is right now a fun spot to shop at Christmas time I find so many good deals on eBay right now so I'm gonna at least walk out of there I'm pretty much gonna walk out there with 10 projectors at least from what I've seen already somebody was only selling a lot no one's selling a lot but they were selling the uh, short throw projectors or yeah short throw projectors I could use another one of them they had them for 220 bucks um, Oh, wait, where are they? Uh, they're not Ben Q. Are they Ben Q's? I think they were Ben Q's. So I could use a couple more of those. Um, I saw a few of the NECs. I can want a few of those. And I am going to be able to probably get a really good deal on converting one of my Chrissy projectors to a short though, because I saw a lens on there for 500 bucks. 
one of the uh, LW four ones. So I'm definitely grabbing that right there. So I'll walk off with a couple of them. I'm just gonna get me another bookcase to stack them somewhere. Definitely not putting them in the attic. And the day people pull their hair out, they go nuts. I've got conversations with my customers. They go back and forth and back and forth on a different projector. What about this? What about that? So forth and so forth and so forth. Drive yourself crazy trying to figure out exactly what projector is going to be suitable. You don't have to go through all that. You're going to make a difference. If it's, if it's up to you, if you want to do 4K, it's up to you. It's up to you. But at the end of the day, for me, I don't have to worry about if it's 720p, if it has a 20,000 to 1 contrast or 4. It is, if it has HDMI, don't care. It's a buy. It's on a good deal. It's, the screen's going to do all the work anyway. Same for me, time and headache. People were at 34, so this is time for me to jump off real quick. Sorry about that. But I gotta go. I was supposed to just come in here and set my equipment up to get it ready for tomorrow. And end up doing a demonstration. <sighs> so I'm gonna go over here. This is the acoustic. I just was gonna shut this computer off. I haven't checked this computer for the last couple of days. It's been running straight for the last couple of days, which is not good. Machine running here. Oh man, I got a bunch of freaking updates coming through for Steam. All right, uh, what's all this mess? Blah 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 blah. blah. I don't have time to get that right now. We can get to that later. It's going to reboot it anyway, so it's not a big deal. It's probably updates. I always get these updates. I was wondering what that indicator was going on because I left my um, I left my computer. I keep hearing it. The freak is that noise coming from? And then I realized that I left the computer on and the speakers are on behind the screen. And that's what I was hearing the notifications popping up. Let's see, we're gonna power this off right here. We need to go to right here. The downside of having a massive screen is bottom line is there we go. The biggest mistake I had, I put a 150 inch screen in one of my in the office one time. Bad mistake. That was a bad mistake. Man, I had to basically get my chair to slide from one end to the next so I can read the email. I got updates on this. I lighten up left and right. Okay, we got an update. About to restart. I mean, I'm going to shut off. I know there's notifications are popping off in this thing. Let's put it on there. All right. So we'll update that. We need to update the machinery anyway. Um, There we go. Alright, the sound boards are off. These out. Tomorrow we'll do some demonstrations too on the red. That's the red right there. That's the screen that I coated with the Phantom Deep Red. I'm going to be doing me another one. So this is going to come down. I'm going to do me another one because I want the um, casing to be jet black. That's what I want. So I'm going to be ordering me another um, projection screen with the casing black. So this is red. I have the lights all done and red up for the top. That's the motorized one right there. Those have been asking me about whether or not if you could basically roll your screen up or down when you paint it. Oh, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Let me see what we got going on here. Oh, nuts. I nearly forgot to shut my PS4 off. Guess what? I shut off on a hard reset. You know what? That's what I do for tomorrow. That's basically going to give me some problems. All right, so let's uh, show you this real quick. So yeah, once you paint the screen, I did a tutorial demonstration on Facebook Live showing you how you can basically roll the screen up or down. Well, we painted the screen on Facebook Live. Bring it back up. See, that's it. Once it dries, it dries. That's why I said that this is a one coat application to this surface. Well, actually, I only had, I had another coat on it. I had one coat on it. It was actually, um, what screen was this to begin with? Oh, it was the original Gamer. And it was converted over to a red, the red technology. So it was already one coat on already. I got two coats on this. That's at the end of it. I'm not putting anything else on this. I don't push it when it comes to these uh, screens, especially these right here, motorized projection screens. As I said before, not to beat a dead horse to death on this, but people understand this. This is a thin piece of PVC that's feeding up into a case. 
It's designed to fit a certain size. So we can get away with it with one coat. We're good. One or two coats, yeah, I'm happy with that. Three coats, no. I actually tore up a screen one time because I put uh, too many applications on it and it trashed the screen. It puts more weight on the motor, puts more stress on the motor. You don't want to be painting four applications right from the door onto a screen one after the next. Keep in mind that this screen is going to take even longer to dry because when you do motorized projection screens, you want to make sure that paint is dry on that screen. I've done painted uh, fixed frame screens and you could dry it to the touch. But when I would put tape against it, they would fall because the screen was still saturated. There was still moisture in the screen. So imagine four applications on a motorized. Not something you want to do. But that's up to you at the end of the day. I think one of the projection screens, these right here are $60. They cost me $60 a pop. So if one of these burn out, let's go buy me another one, 68 bucks. But I had a tension screen that I bought. It was a 120, 120 inch black tension screen, and that screen was three grand. Do you think I'm gonna mess that thing up? Mm -mm, no. And once you paint over it, here's your warranty gone. So just let you know. But that's why I just buy it. Three grand, coated it, good. I had it for a couple of years, and I actually sold it to a friend of mine. He bought it off me for uh, $1,300. He bought it off me. He's still using it to this day. All right, well, that being said, I'm out of here. Hope you enjoyed the video demonstration. I guess we can call it that. Um, tomorrow we'll be back in here. And then I have my Thanksgiving. I'm not going to be on. Not even to watch the game or anything else to show anything at all. That's private, so I keep that to myself on holidays. But other than that, uh, I'm going to be showing up a little bit more here. We'll be also be in here with the lights out, because the lights out, this whole place lights up. Boom, 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 like a disco. All right, got to go. Thank you all, and God bless. And of course, of course, of course, we cannot forget. We cannot forget. I thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for blessing us with amazing technology. You know, when I first started off, I had one projector. That's it. One projector. I couldn't even afford a 3,000 lumen projector. And here I have all these different projectors I get to play around with every day. It's my ultra short throw pile right there. I've got a bunch of those short throws running around the house right there. One over there. we got one over there. But God is good. God bless me to get good deals on all these projectors. Really good deals. All right. That being said, got to go.